This, my friends, is the Asus ROG Strix G17 laptop. It's one of Newegg's most popular gaming laptops that they have available, which is why today's video is partnered with Newegg Now to talk about this laptop and whether or not you should consider it. So big thanks to Newegg Now for sponsoring this video, sending the laptop over so that I could give you a review of it. <laughs> Now, actually, truth be told, the one that I requested was the G15, which is the 15-inch model of this laptop, but that was out of stock at the time, and now it's simply just the G17. So, roughly, I'm going to be talking about both in this review, but for the most part, just know that my personal experience came with the 17-inch. However, now the 17-inch is out of stock, and the 15 is the one that's in stock. So, to get this started, I have to ask the question. Why is this one of the most popular laptops? Why are you people buying this? This is just not good. I don't understand this laptop, especially since I've had experiences with other gaming laptops from Asus like the Zephyrus G14, which has a Ryzen processor and up to an RTX 2060 graphics card. That thing, blows this thing out of the water. Now let's go ahead and talk about why, because this G17, just like the G15, actually has an i7-10750H, which is six cores and 12 threads, 16 gigs of DDR4 2933 megahertz RAM, 512 gig NVMe SSD, with an RTX 2070 plus Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. The screen is a 17.3 inch 1080p, 144 hertz, three millisecond response time, IPS, 300 nits, 100% SRG, RGB anti-glare panel, which is quite good specs. The 15 inch can also come in 1080p 240 hertz and costs around $1,500, which is right around the same cost of the G14. I do wanna also talk about the fact that you do get some expandable stuff under the hood. It's actually really easy to install. You unscrew it, which is regular Phillips head screws. Then you have access to both dim slots. And then there's three M.2 ports under the hood, one of which is occupied with this 512 gig model, and then two more that you could add on top of later. Making it a pretty decent setup overall that you can upgrade over time. But as I've been discovering while I've been reviewing more laptops, it does appear like Intel is lagging quite far behind. The i7 processor just doesn't stand up against AMD's Ryzen 7 in the mobile department in a couple of ways. Let's take battery life. This laptop has a four cell 66 watt hour battery and I got two hours dead on with this laptop. Whereas with the Zephyrus G14, it had 10 more watt hours, but I got three times the total battery life over. It was six hours and 40 minutes compared to the two hours on this thing. Intel sucks the power juice, but it's not just Intel to blame here. When I opened up the G17 from Asus, I noticed that it had it has a few weird quirks about it. Number one, it's thick. It's a thick boy. Obviously it's a 17 inch laptop and it has to cool that i7 processor, but it's kind of bigger than it needs to be because it adds things like an RGB light around the base. This thing just screams gamer, has no subtlety to it whatsoever. The only thing that's really missing is an RGB logo on the back instead of the mirror fit. But because it's so big, that panel's so large, the hinges that are actually used on this thing are kind of weak. And when you're actually sitting with it, the panel Panel can close on you without you actually doing a whole lot and the screen wobbles to heck and back. On top of that, it's noisy as hell. Currently, I'm not doing anything and the fans are actually ramped up. And that's not to say what it's like in game because in game it's so much worse than this, which I could forgive if it kept temps down, but we'll get to that in a second. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. But the best part is that it has a decent stereo speaker setup that just doesn't get quite loud. And so when you're actually in the middle of games, the speakers are about the same volume as the fans. It's hard to understand what's happening. You need a decent pair of headphones to play with this thing. Especially for how thick it is, I would expect more bass response out of this thing, but it's kind of crunchy on the low end. And as I mentioned, the max volume just isn't there. It doesn't really distort, but the speakers are just like, you only really should be using it for listening to music when you're at home and not much else.
Now let's cover the basics of this laptop as we're talking about it. So for I.O. on the left hand side, you've got three USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A ports and a headphone combo port. On the right side, you got nothing but an exhaust or speaker out. And then on the back side is the power in the USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C with display port, HDMI and Ethernet. That's a solid I.O. setup. So it's not too bad if you're going to be taking this and trying to turn it into a portable workstation. But it's just so hard to believe you're going to do that with how loud this thing exclaims, I'm a gamer, look at me, I play video games, and nothing else. Foremost there is the keycaps. They're RGB illuminated as you would expect in a gaming lineup, but it also has translucent WASD keys so you don't forget what your movement buttons are, and it looks okay. It's fine. I, I also have to gripe about the numpad for a second because it is a 17 inch laptop and it has space to do everything properly, but instead they don't. They don't space out the keyboard properly and instead they move the zero over to the left instead of in the middle and it's just kind of frustrating to deal with. And they also have some additional buttons at the top like volume adjustments, the microphone, and the Asus button to do all of that with. The keyboard's fine to type on. They're concave, it feels all right. It, it, it'll get the job done for either gaming or for whatever work stuff you need to do it types fine and i do always appreciate a good touchpad it does work fine and it has dedicated buttons which i'm a huge fan of but seems like it's going away in the age of modern laptops there's also one more thing that i think needs to stop happening in the realms of laptops and i've actually only found this on asus's versions of laptops and this also goes for the zephyrus g14 they include microphones but no webcam how do you not have a webcam on a laptop i don't care that it's for gaming in the age of just needing to be digital or remote. Having a webcam, even if it's a garbage 480p webcam is better than not including one at all. You can include RGB strips at the bottom. You can put in a crappy webcam up top. Number one, there's space for it. And number two, what's the point of including microphones on a laptop without a webcam, especially one with fans so loud that if you tried to talk into the microphone, it would get muffled by the fan noise that's happening all the time. It just doesn't make any sense. Either keep including webcams or don't include microphones and no webcam. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, at least in my opinion. Pre-installed software is kind of butt, has McAfee, which is just annoying and always pops up. My Asus software is also annoying, constantly pops up, kind of rough. I wish they wouldn't pre-include it, but it's easily uninstallable. Now let's get into the benchmarks because it is an i7 and RTX 2070. So let's go ahead and see if it can actually hold up. So I tested most modern AAA titles and at 1080p high settings, this is what we got. Red Dead Redemption 2, average 61 FPS, Horizon Zero Dawn, 75, Witcher 3, 106, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, 89, Death Stranding came in at right under 100, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 61 and a half, and then Shadow of the Tomb Raider was in a 94.7, with the big question being obviously Cyberpunk, and it's the only AAA title that got under 60 FPS, coming in at a 56 average. So it does all right in the games. The 2070 on the mobile form factor can hold up, but as I mentioned earlier, at the expense of being loud and honestly quite hot. So the temps were not anything to write home about. They were actually kind of sad. The GPU temps regularly reached 86 degrees Celsius after a long gaming session. And I'm sure if I pushed it longer than I had with this laptop and put it in a less than optimal environment, like on my lap, it would have gotten a lot hotter. And the CPU was always pushing close to 100 with it averaging 97 degrees Celsius in the gaming setup. It's just clear that with the cooling system that Asus has on it, it's not enough to handle both the GPU and that i7 CPU, where I did not experience this on my Zephyrus G14. Never reached above 70 on the Zephyrus G14, and even though it only had a 2060, I'm pretty sure you could have slapped a 2070 in there and still not have reached the 100 degrees that we're seeing here on the CPU. It's honestly just bad. Number one, the cooling solution is not sufficient for the Intel processor. And number two, the Intel processor is hot, it's loud and it sucks so much power that the battery life is a third of what you can get on a comparable AMD laptop for the exact same price. You are sacrificing a GPU, so the i7 is a little bit cheaper than the Zephyrus G14, but at the same time, you're getting a much worse experience overall. The fans are loud, the speakers are sub-quality, hinge is an annoyance to deal with. Honestly, this laptop frustrated me. 
I'm so confused as to why people are buying this. The Intel processor makes it a rougher experience than just getting the Zephyrus G14. And then on top of that, there's just not much else to write home about unless it's really the fact that people are picking this up because it's such a gamery oriented laptop. But I think you're severely missing out by buying something like this at this price point. And I would recommend that you check out any of the other top sellers on Newegg's best gaming laptops because they likely are gonna give you a better experience than this. So that's my review of the ROG Strix G17, kind of akin to the G15, which is a hot, popular item for them and honestly big thanks to Newegg for sending it over but I'm going to recommend that you don't even touch this try one of their other laptops try the Zephyrus G14 if you can find it on their website I think that would net you a better overall experience than the G17 so that's my review of this one let me know what you think of it down below in the comments let me know if you have this laptop you've tried it you've seen it or if you have another one that you would like us to check out from Newegg's website which again big thanks to Newegg now for sponsoring this video check go buy your PC at Newegg, okay? Definitely check them out for all your PC building needs, your laptop needs, your monitor needs. They have obviously nearly everything that you could possibly want for building a PC, but then on top of that, they are just the go-to place for doing it. I've built so many PCs buying from their website, so it's an honor to actually be sponsored by them now. So check them out at the link in the video description. And with that being said, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching this review and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.